Hi, this is Pat Moorhead with More Insights and Strategy, and we are here for another 6.5 podcast. We are in the virtual booth at Supercomputing 22, and I'm here with my co-host, Daniel Newman. Daniel, how you doing, buddy? It's good to be not here, quote unquote, at the virtual yeah. event. I uh, would have loved to have been there. And you know, Pat, it's just the way it goes, right? In Texas, it's drivable. It's something we can go and come back. But nope, we are going to have to fly somewhere into the middle of the Pacific during this week. But super excited to be here. Super competing is always a great event. No, it really is. Uh, but hey, let's get to the meat of the conversation here. We are here with Christina Perfetto. She is in charge of AI product management at Dell Technologies. Christina, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm very excited to be here with both of you today. No, it's great stuff. And uh, sure, we would have loved to have been there live, but you know, we're just kind of flying all over the place these days, but um, uh, maybe next year. So Dell has really had a storied history uh, in high performance computing over the years. I mean, I think I've been tracking Dell for 25 years. I uh, show my age uh, a little bit there. And there are different ways that you put together uh, solutions uh, for um, HPC in particular to optimize for uh, AI. One of those is the Dell Validated Design Program. And I'm curious, what is that and how is that used by your customers and channel partners? Yeah, no, I mean, a great question to start with, right? Um, a lot of organizations there constantly deploying solutions in their data center at the edge and across hybrid clouds. But you know how they design them can have a huge impact on costs, efficiencies, and scalability. Uh, and the amount of time that it takes to actually design the solution, right? If we look at it from planning, acquiring the hardware, integrating all the components, testing, and then finally getting to deploy it into production, that really can impact time to market and the ability to innovate across the business. And I'm sure you've heard this from people time and time again. Um, but when it comes to validated designs, this is where they really come in. So validated designs, they're stringently tested and proven configurations, right? They are designed from the very start to dynamically fit specific use cases. So these are integrated solutions. And as I said, you know, they've been tested and documented by our engineers and in conjunction right. with our partners, which is really important if you want to make sure that something is truly validated. But it's important to note, right, and I'm sure you guys have seen this from time to time, you know, you get those documented architectures, right? So they're sure. out there in the world, you know, but you have to question, are they truly validated, right? Were they really built to answer the what and why for a use case? Yeah, and they shift so, around. They shift around as uh, as well. And you, you know, gosh, even firmware updates and you know software updates. You basically have to play whack a mole and support those all the way because essentially they change over time. They do, and and because of that, you know, it's not really helping customers drive you know faster time to value or be really efficient, right? Because they're trying to adjust consistently. Um, and as a matter of fact, we actually recently did some studies with customers who've deployed our validated solutions uh, just to get an understanding of what types of improvements they've seen. And they've actually reported back improvements for efficiency, costs, and more. But when it came to the validated designs for AI, and I think this is kind of important for your audience to understand, is 25% of them said that they had faster project completion with like near zero margin of error. And then 60% said a decrease in time spent, you know, actually architecting the infrastructure, you know, among other improvements. But when you, you know, again, when we look at what those obstacles are, these are significant improvements for, for customers. It's, it, it is, Christina. And by the way, um, this whole AI and analytics thing is gaining so much momentum that the, you know, the interdependence from infrastructure, from the frameworks layer, from software itself, and then of course the, the models, the open source, the develop, there's a lot of complexity here. And so to get to the point where, as you suggested, it's not just maybe a documented design, but it's truly a validated design yeah. that requires a process and approach per se. Can you share just a little bit about how Dell is, is, is managing that to make sure that these AI and analytics designs are truly validated and gonna offer those better time to value? 
Absolutely. And, you know, it may sound cliche to say this, but it is the truth. You know, it really starts with listening to our customers and understanding their needs. Um, you've got to understand what you're building towards as, as that framework, right? There is that outcome and that goal that organizations are trying to get to. So it has to start there. Um, and as I stated, we work very closely in conjunction with our partners. Um, you know, we've got validated designs that span everything from business applications like Oracle, SAP, um, Microsoft Data Platform, those can go all the way over to VDI, HPC, as you know, analytics and AI. But I'm just going to dive in a little specifically then around AI for, for this audience. Uh, and, you know, for us, it really began with building what we believe is a core platform, right? So based on the changing nature of data and the need to really access large amounts of disparate data from an analytics, AI, machine learning kind of perspective, we knew that organizations needed an approach to data access and ingestion. So with this foundation in place, we're then able to add horizontal and vertical AI and analytics use cases on top of that platform. But when you start with a platform that you have validated, and now you build these use cases on top of it, that again, it, it's, it's a matter of going through um, a, a, a core process within Dell. So far as what's required from the engineering teams, what's required from our partners, what does that testing process look like? What have we done with that testing? And making sure again, that it's all put out there uh, for our customers to be able to understand what we did, how we did it, help them understand how they're going to be able to do it and what they can expect from that. Um, so, okay, if I can give you another example of, you know, we talk about AI and those validated designs. Listen, the more examples, the better. I mean, we're, we're here to, to, to listen to you, not ourselves, although we do like to hear ourselves talk, I'll admit. <laughs> well, thank you then for more time. So just as an example, right? So for validated uh, designs for AI, um, again, kind of looking at what those foundations were, yeah. what we started with was um, our designs for AI for virtual environments, right? With GPU virtualization. So with that validated design, organizations are actually able to democratize and unlock AI across the enterprise using tools they already know. Right? That just makes it so much easier for them to, to start with AI faster. Uh, but then we were actually able to add, as I said, you're able to add on top of this. So we were able to add designs that were focused on ML ops, you know, standardized machine learning pipelines, minimize friction for data science and engineering teams. And then we were also able to focus on auto ML, making it easier and faster for data scientists to train their models. So then we took this to the next level with our validated designs for analytics data lakes. Um, have you heard about that validated design? I, I haven't, but you know what? Daniel and I have both um, written a bunch of data about data lakes. They are the new fancy uh, industry word and are bringing some cool capabilities to uh, end customers. And if you ever if you ever want to see Pat dance, Christina, I do have him do, doing a, a keynote at a, a Cloudera event talking about data lakes. He danced on the stage too. Well, that I would actually love to see. Maybe we'll do that one off air. But we'll that yeah, show. I mean, I'll, I'll link to it in the show notes. I mean, my mentor, early mentor, did tell me uh, if you don't, you know, if you have to set your hair on fire to get the uh, the crowd going, do that. But I decided to dance instead of that because <laughs> I only have so much hair left. And well, Daniel, so. Ouch. All right, all right. Let's let her, let's let her go. All right. Share, Christina, share. <laughs> well, since you guys already do have an understanding of it, just at least for your audience's purposes, because uh, it is still a fairly new concept I oh, think, for a lot of companies. New. Iceberg yeah. just came along, right? So, yeah. Exactly. And, and for us, you know, it really is about, you know, merging your data warehouse and your data lakes to make it possible to capture and use all types of data. Right, whether it's structured, unstructured, semi-structured, uh, but essentially it's about giving organizations, you know, experience and they can experience the benefits. Right, the best way to describe it is they're going to experience the benefits that come from the open data lake, combined with data quality, performance, security, and governance that you get from a data warehouse. And I think that is really going to open up the world for a lot of companies and organizations today when they're really trying to get the most out of their data. So. Setting, we've set the stage for 
uh, what a valid is data design is. By the way, I worked on a project 10 years ago uh, with a, uh, a prior leader of the validated design program. So this is nothing new uh, for Dell. What you are doing though is honing on uh, certain use cases and I've seen increasing quality in the approach. Um, so we talked in generalities, there are these specifics you can talk about with customers. You don't necessarily have to give their name, uh, but any specifics how customers are using these or, or are we just way too early in the uh, in, in the process to talk about that? Yeah, no, I mean, actually, we are not that early in the process. We, we actually have quite a few examples okay. um, of Good. customers who have been using it. <laughs> uh, you can go to Dell.com to see more. But I mean, have you heard of a company called Nature Fresh Farms? I have, and I might not, not look like the healthiest person to you, but I have actually heard it. And this is a company that Dell has talked about on stage often. If you've been tracking Dell, like we do as industry analysts. And, and actually, they're kind of one of my favorite ones to talk about. One, because they're so relatable, right? Like you just said, everybody eats food. <laughs> so it's not that far of a stretch for people to start to understand the role that um, AI and validated designs can play in an organization when you, when you can relate it to something that everybody, regardless of industry, can kind of talk about. Um, and the reason I think for me, well, okay, just so everyone knows in, in your audience, uh, Nature Fresh Farms, they're actually one of the largest independent greenhouse growers in Canada. And um, I often tell my friends that Dell and Nature Fresh Farms, you know, we're helping bees do their jobs better. You know, yeah. it's just kind of a cool way to think of it. Uh, but in actuality, what they're doing is they're actually turning their growers into data scientists. And that's because they're actually empowering them with ML ops and auto ML approaches. So what they're doing is they're actually applying AI, robotics, automation to more precisely control everything when it comes to growing from light and chemical absorption to irrigation and then pollinization, you know, to picking. It's, it really is the whole gamut of, of, of a grower's world that is now just gone a level above than just, you know, digging in the dirt, putting in a seed and see what you get, right? This is this is real science behind it. Um, and, and the cool thing is it's not just happening in their greenhouse. They actually are able to extend their AI and analytics out to their trucks. So, you know, this helps them become cool. even more proactive in managing pests, disease. Uh, they're able to monitor the temperatures of their trucks. Um, they can track the deliveries. And, but more importantly, they can access all this data and analytics in, in real time without worrying about the latency that gets caused from having to move data from edge to core to cloud, which a lot of yeah. organizations are, are struggling with today. Yeah, this, sort of, this sort of brings together the promise of what we've been talking about for a long time with uh, not just AI ML, but really IoT edge applications. You know, we all know the the data is proliferating much faster out outside of the actual data center, and for uh, most AI, uh, you know, opportunities to truly work, we need all the data that's uh, part of the entire kind of end to end supply chain. In the case of something like uh, Nature Fresh, which is what you were talking about, so that's all really really interesting now. Um, the virtual in the booth, we got to keep this moving quickly, Christina. So supercomputing, talk about, you know, kind of how does this all evolve and is there anything kind of coming up that's exciting that you can talk about? And any, uh, anything uh, that's not announced that you want to spill on the show is, yeah, is fair game too. Away. Spill. <laughs> uh, we like to break things on our show whenever possible, including news. No, I mean, absolutely. Listen, this is an exciting time, right, for, for HPC analytics AI. It really is. Um, you know, organizations, they're constantly looking for ways and they're looking for solutions to address those complex questions and problems that they have. Um, and these shows are, are places where they can go and get that information and, and explore what solutions are available. And more importantly, get to interact, you know, with, with people like Dell, where we can kind of talk through that with them in real time. So for us, you know, when we look at what we see coming and based on our conversations with our customers, you know, for example, we're, we're hearing a lot around graph databases, um, deep learning at the graph database level. So this is an area that we do hear a lot about. Um, we're also hearing a lot around the areas of 
natural language processing, automated uh, speech recognition, text to speech, con all the way up to conversational AI. You know, and then there's the next level of you know conversations around digital humans, and then tuning you know autonomous driving models for better robotics. So there there is a lot going on. Um, we do have a couple of announcements um, that are are taking place this week. I, I would highly recommend everybody stop by. To, to the booth um, and keep an eye for our announcements, but we do have some new things coming out for HPC. Um, a, a lot of announcements taking place in our server division that I would recommend that people definitely keep an eye on. Um, and then some new areas that, that we're touching upon that I, I would say shows a, a, a next level, right? Um, a, a progression in how we can utilize the data and analyze it. Um, so keep an eye out for that one. I don't want to give away too much right now. Um, but you know, in the area as it relates to the validated designs, which we, we started talking about today, I, I have to say, listen, you know, wait and see. You, we're always researching and we're always developing new designs with our partners. And for us, you know, it's really about making sure we're helping them today. But more importantly, what we build, we're preparing them, you know, for still what's to come tomorrow. Exciting stuff, Christina. And Wow, I could talk about this forever, but we do have a time limit here on the In the Booth. We are talking products, short and punchy. Hopefully, we've been punchy enough here, but I just want to thank you uh, for coming on to the 6.5, and uh, good luck with uh, the show. It's always a good show. I've been there three or four times, typically outside of the country, which I know is weird, and it's in Dallas, and I'm not going to be there, but... Uh, uh, we will miss uh, seeing you and the whole Dell Technologies team. So uh, thanks again. Thank you guys for having me. So nice to be here. Right. So this is Pat Moorhead with more insights and strategy with my incredible co-host, Daniel Newman of Futurum Research. If you like what you heard, hit that subscribe button. And you know where to find us on Twitter. We spend way too much time on there. If you'd like to give us some pluses and minus commentary. So that's it for this show. Have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Take care.